In this video on JavaScript questions, we're going to address the question, what is type coercion? Now, understanding coercion can help you avoid problems that can occur in your code. Now, the best way to illustrate coercion is with a statement. So let me open the console and we will get started. Here's the console. I'm going to enter this simple statement, 25 plus true. What's that going to return? Well, in most languages, this would return an error. But in JavaScript, it converts the Boolean true to a number and then actually adds it to the previous number. And so we get 26. So true gets converted to a 1. False gets converted to a 0. So to coerce means to force. So type coercion is, is forcing one type into another, just like we saw here. Now, JavaScript is a very forgiving when it comes to types. In most languages, as I mentioned, this type of statement would cause an error, but not in JavaScript. Now, these operators will convert values to numbers. So minus, multiplication, division, and then the modulus operator. It'll convert to numbers. So we can try a couple more examples. If we do... 25 times false, since false converts to a 0, we get 0 back. Let's do 5 minus a string, a string of 1. That converts it to a number, that string to a number, subtracts it, and we actually get 4. Now, the plus symbol is a bit different. Because it can be used to both add numbers together and also to concatenate strings, it doesn't automatically convert things to numbers. In fact, by default, its first priority is to convert things to a string. So let, let's take a look at that. If I were to do 5 plus 1 as a string, it returns... 51 is a string. And so it basically concatenated these two together. It converted the 5 to a string and then concatenated it to the 1. And so we get a string of 51 back. So these are all examples of type coercion in JavaScript. Now, sometimes that can be useful. For example, if you're expecting input back from a form or getting data from a text file, JavaScript can automatically convert those things for you into a number if you're doing some sort of computation on it. So type coercion works great in those cases. But mostly you need to be aware of it because it could cause some problems in your code if you're not aware of what's going on. It could be converting types and you could be getting a result which you're not expecting. Now, another type of coercion that happens is something we call truthiness. So if you are using an if statement, for example, on some value, JavaScript is able to convert values to true or false. And we speak of this as truthy and falsy. So certain values are truthy, certain values are falsy, because that's what they can get converted to when we're testing them. Now, most JavaScript values convert to the Boolean true. Let's look at some examples of that. Now, to do that, I'm going to close the console and jump to Sublime. And we'll just enter a simple, a few simple statements here. We're going to check to see if I and then we'll simply log to the console. Whoops. It is true. So will I be true? We're, we're testing to see if it's true in this if statement. And it's set to 10 right now. Will it be true? Let's go ahead and save that. Refresh this page. 
and I'll open the console to see what we get. It is true. So sure enough, that value automatically converts to true. Let's try something else. Let's say we have a string. Save that, refresh, and that converts to true as well. So as I said, most all values in JavaScript convert to true. In fact, there's only seven falsy values. So seven values that convert to false. And let's look at those really quick. False obviously is false. Zero converts to false. A negative zero converts to false. An empty string converts to false. NAN is a special value which converts to, to false. Null converts to false and undefined converts to false. Now, since there are numbers and strings that can convert to false, meaning zero, negative zero, and an empty string, it's not super accurate to check to see if something exists, to see if something's been assigned to a variable, a number or a string, using this simple truthy falsy check. Let's look at that problem and how that can occur. So I'm going to change this variable. So I'm just declaring it. I'm not setting a value to it. Now I want to change this test. And I'm going to check to see if it's false. Because if it's undefined, if it's not defined at all, then it should be false. And so if I hasn't been given a value, I want to assign it a value. And the value I want to assign to it is 10. So this is the logic of this code that we've set up here. Anytime I has no value placed into it, I'm going to set it to 10. If it has a value, I'm going to use that value. And the way we'll use the value is simply log it to the console. This is often a technique used with truthy and falsy to check to see if something is undefined. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. I'm going to display the console. I'll refresh this and it comes back 10. So if we take a look at the code, yeah, I didn't have anything in it. It was undefined and so we set it to 10. That's what we wanted to happen. Okay, let's say now that somewhere in our program, I get set to 100. It should display 100. We don't want to override it if it has a value in it. So let's try that. Sure enough, that works as well. It displays 100. Now, here's the kicker. What if it gets set to 0 at some point in our code? We, Since 0 is a number, we want to display it. Well, because of the truthy and falsy, it's going to set it to 10. And so that would cause a problem within our code if we were relying on the truthy and falsy values there. So really, there is a better way to check for the existence of a value, to check to see if something is undefined. So let's look at what that better way would be. So I'm going to replace inside my is statement here, I'm going to replace it with type of I triple equal and then inside of quotes undefined because the type of an undefined value is undefined in quotes. And so this is going to be more accurate. So let me save that. Now if this works correctly, we should be displaying zero when we log it to the console. Okay. So let me go ahead and refresh. Sure enough, we display zero. Now let's remove this assignment statement and let's see if I get set to 10. Refresh again. Sure enough, I is 10. So that is the better way to check to see if a variable has a value to see if it's equal to undefined. Then relying on the coercion, which is sometimes what we do in our code. So that is type coercion and some of the things you need to be aware of when dealing with it in JavaScript. Hopefully you found that helpful. If so, like the video. 
If you'd like to access other videos from our YouTube channel, you can click the video link in the middle of the page. You can subscribe to our channel by clicking the link on the left. You can also visit our website, allthingsjavascript.com, for courses on JavaScript by clicking the link on the right. Thanks for watching.